In this video we're going to look over this Canon AE-1 35mm camera. Uh, this is the first computerized SLR as I understand it uh, introduced in 1976 and made up until the early 80s when it was superseded by the AE-1 program. So this is the original AE-1. It's equi equipped with the uh, FD 50mm f1.8 lens. It's the newer style with the button here that rotates as opposed to the breech lock style. Uh, this camera appears to be in nice working condition and so we are going to give it a try here. Um, first we'll just shoot the shutter a few times here and just see. One thing that I notice is I do not hear that characteristic cough sound that's so common with these cannons. It sounds really good. And so let's uh, step down through the shutter speeds. Here's one one thousandth, one five hundredth, one two fiftieth, one one twenty fifth, one sixtieth, one thirtieth, one fifteenth, one eighth, one fourth, one half, one full second, and there's even a two full second. I'm going to take the lens off just so we can watch the mirror action here. You see straight through to the pressure plate and it goes back. And then there's the bulb setting where it will stay open as long as I hold the button down. So, appears to be working well. If we look at the lens, um, this is the type that has the locking A, which is good for the, the automatic setting. This is a shutter priority camera, so you set the shutter, you set the uh, lens at the locking A position, and then it will stop down the lens according to what uh, your setting is as long as it's within an acceptable range for the conditions you're shooting in. Um, the lens has nice smooth focus. Uh, I don't see any oil on the blades. I did put the camera on bulb mode and look through the lens with it wide open and I did not see any patches of fungus or anything bad like that inside. So seems to be in pretty nice condition. Uh, we can mount it back on and show that that works well. It comes with this screw and lens cap that demonstrates that the filter threads are good. So that works. Another thing that's uh, good about this camera is the battery door. A lot of these have damaged battery doors and this one is still in good condition. And if we just pop that open. We can see that the latch is good and that the spring is good. It comes with a battery. Um, I can't guarantee how long this will operate it, but it's, it's in there and it seems to be operating it now. Locks closed properly. Uh, we should try the self-timer here. If we swing this little lever out like that to expose this red light, There and now we see that red light is blinking. We can see it from the front too, so that you can run and be in the picture. And after a few more seconds, there it goes. So that works. If you push it back, it locks the shutter button so it cannot be activated. If we go around the back side here, we can see it still has a nice pliable rubber eye, cap, eye cup. These are often hard and dried out. If we open up the door. We can see the shutter curtain looks nice. Film transport is turning properly. Very nice and smooth. We move over here to the door. Pressure plate looks good. A little abrasion there from, from running but uh, no problems it seems. Door edges are, are quite dry and smooth. I don't feel much if any uh, light seal residue on there so 
that's probably a good sign. It looks like some hair is kind of printed from one surface to another. Um, don't believe it would need light seals immediately to still take good pictures. Um, be something to consider in the future. It is a camera potentially 40 years old. I don't know exactly where this serial number 1490155 fits in uh, in the years when it was made. Got a good rewind crank, nice metal one. Looking at the back, at the bottom here, a few little scratches right here. It's hard to catch the light just right here, but uh, not a lot of uh, dinging around trying to find the tripod socket, maybe just a little bit. Uh, the cover is still here for attaching an optional auto wind and the contacts over here. Um, the stop down preview, I'm going to just take it off the auto section and put it on a small aperture. And there we can see that that's working. It locks. You can push the little button to take it off. There we see that. So that's working. I did verify that looking through the viewfinder and uh, setting it in auto mode um, and uh, setting a, a shutter speed, the aperture that it was going to pick depended upon how bright the scene was. So that metering is obviously working. It's, uh, it's very responsive to light and I could then watch the aperture stop down to different values for any given shutter speed depending on how much light was pointed toward the camera. So it did seem like it was functioning just fine. We'll put the lens cap back on. It comes with this strap. Now this strap has some black material that's kind of flaking off here on the inside. It doesn't seem related to the structure of it. Um, it's pretty heavy duty material. Uh, the uh, little film holders here have a little bit of elasticity, but I wouldn't trust those to hold a roll of film. Um, anyway, a fairly nice example of the Canon AE-1, original 35mm SLR camera with 50mm f1.8 lens.